We are reading chapter 13 of The Crossroads. Jamie jumped out of bed and rushed to his brother. A detention center? center. You mean he's in jail, but he's not a criminal. What happened? Tomas took a few choking breaths before rubbing his eyes with his sleeves. Officers blocked the road and demanded to see everyone's papers. Don wanted to take the side roads, but I said the highway, which was faster. It's all my fault. Tomas let a sob, let out a sob and caused Vita to bark from her spot on the bed. Tomas tossed his keys into a pile of dirty clothes and turned on his heels back out the door. From there, from their trailer, Jamie watched the shadow of his brother stagger over to the big house. Part of him wanted to go too. The other part was too scared to interfere. A light came on in the kitchen and the shadows of Tomas disappeared as Don Chich Donna Chichi let him in. Jamie waited by the door, watching the big house, and didn't even notice the chill in the air until he saw Angela huddled on her bed. He draped an extra blanket over her shoulders and returned to his post against the door jamb, clutching one of Tomas's sweaters. The sun was up over the ridge when Tomas made his way back. With the blanket still draped over her shoulders, Angela made them mugs of instant coffee, black and sweet for Tomas and very milky and sweet for Jamie. Hers just a little sweet, with a color in between. She had converted her bed back to a table and benches and made a pile of toast smothered with butter. Tomas took his coffee but didn't drink and drink it as he sat on Angela's former bed. Vita inched her way to him. He placed a hand on her, one ear, and she kissed his palm to make sure he felt better. How's Donna Chichi? Jamie asked about ready to march down to the detention center and demand they deport her with him. She wouldn't, Jamie gasped. Tomas shrugged his shoulders. So what happened? Angela asked. Immigration control blocked up the whole highway. Everyone knows about the, the few fixed points within 100 miles of the border. But this one was a pop-up. I've never encountered one there before, and I've driven that road more times than I remember. Jamie remembered the checkpoint he and Angela went through in the southern state of Chiapas in Mexico. Men with rifles asserting their power and scaring everyone in their path. They had witnessed a Salvadorian woman literally dragged off the bus after the officer noticed her Central American accent. His heart had gone out to her, and she had been a complete stranger. He refused to think about Dawn enduring the same thing. At first, I thought the traffic was due to an accident. By the time I knew what was really happening, I couldn't turn around. Tomas said this to, to Vida as she continued to reassuring, reassuring him with his kisses, her kisses. His free hand brought the coffee up to his lips, but he seemed to forget what he was doing and set it back down without drinking. They took us both in. What? Why? Jamie asked. It didn't make sense. Tomas had a driver's license from the state of New Mexico and papers that said he could legally live and work here. And Don had been here forever. When Tomas had picked them up after they crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, they had come across one of the fixed checkpoints. Maybe the guard had asked Tomas a simple question. Or from Jamie's memory, it seemed like the officer had barely glanced in the truck he had seen a grown-up, two youths, and a stray dog and waved them by as if it was nothing. Angela placed a piece of toast in Tomas's hand, and he ate it, though Jamie was sure he didn't know what he was doing. They said they were looking for criminals, but I think they were taking advantage of the situation to make as many arrests as possible, Tomas explained. In English, they call it DWB, driving while brown. What does that mean? Jamie asked. It means if you look Latino, they bring, it, bring you in, Angela explained. Look Latino? Jamie asked. There wasn't any way a Latino looked. Jamie and Angela were brown with dark straight hair, but their moms were closer to tan and both had curly hair. Jennifer Lopez looks like, like somebody else who isn't 
anything like Cameron Diaz, and none of them resemble Zoe Saldana, even when she isn't blue or green. How could anyone think Latinos look the same? Exactly. We're a culture, not a race. Tomas agreed. What they did is racial profiling and stereotyping. They took Don because he's brown, has no papers, and doesn't speak any English. They brought me in because I'm brown and had Don with me. But they let you go. After hours of questions, they were convinced my papers were fake and spent hours interrogating me to catch me lying. When they finally let me go, I said I wasn't leaving without Don. I even lied and insisted that he was my abuelo. But they wouldn't budge. There was nothing I could do. Tomas rubbed his forehead and squinted his eyes shut. He stayed that way for a few minutes, but no more tears rolled down his cheeks. He slammed his hand on the table and finally looked up again. Hurry up and get dressed. I'll drop you off at school. But is it safe for us to go there? Jamie asked. He didn't really like the school here and would do anything not to go. But this was different. Miguel had died coming home from school in Guatemala. What would prevent immigration officers from stopping his school bus or even coming on to the, into the school building? He knew he couldn't be the only undocumented kid at school. What then? Churches and schools are typically considered sanctuary spaces, Angela responded instead. There are safe places where police officers can't arrest anyone unless their person is endangering people, like a bomb threats or school shootings. We talked about this in one of our classes. Jamie turned to Tomas to see if it was true. Not that he didn't believe Angela, but she did like school more than he did. Tomas nodded. I can't see immigration officers warning to target school, wanting to target schools. Most kids don't carry identification, and besides, it's a lot of work to look after kids in a detention center. It's one thing to detain a whole family because the parents can look after the kids. But if not, the government has to pay a lot more people to take care of them, including teachers, since children are required to go to school. I'm more concerned with you staying here. Here? Jamie looked around the trailer. They were down a long dirt road in the middle of a cattle ranch with no visible neighbors. Just the other day, Don said no one would bother coming down here. They know about Donna Chichi. They could decide to target her, Tomas read his mind. A breath choked in Jamie's throat. The trailer didn't have a lock, and even if it did, it wouldn't make any difference. He'd seen too many movies and cop shows where the police just barged through thick wooden doors. The trailer door was made of flimsy aluminum. When I mentioned this to Mr. George, he reminded me this is private property and legally no one can trespass, not even an immigration officer without permission. Still, don't let anyone in. Tomas's message couldn't have been clear. Immigration officers were like vampires. You don't invite them inside. I need to check on the cows and calves, feed everyone, and then we'll go. Tomas drained his coffee in one shot and shoveled a whole slice of toast into his mouth. You need to sleep, Angela got into her demanding mothering role with her hands on her hips. It's been ages since she did that, and it made Jamie smile. Good, the old Angela wasn't completely gone. But Tomas shook his head as he swallowed. Sleep can come later. I need to stop by the local sheriff's office. The sheriff knows Don, and maybe he has connections to help bring him back here to his real home.